In this video, I will show you how to use the GenSwap tool in Luminar Neo. The GenSwap tool is part of the generative AI tools in Luminar Neo. It allows you to add or swap elements in your photos with just a simple text prompt. In this video, I will cover everything you need to know to get the most out of this powerful tool. To begin with, let's discuss how to get the GenSwap tool. Like other generative AI tools such as GenErase and GenExpand, the GenSwap is a tool exclusively available to Luminar Neo subscribers and Creative Journey Pass holders. Whether you choose a monthly, yearly or two-year subscription plan, you will have access to the generative AI tools as long as you remain subscribed. Lifetime users, on the other hand, will require the current Creative Journey Pass to access the Gen AI tools. If you recently purchased the application, the pass was likely included in your purchase. So be sure to double check your Skylum account. If you're planning to purchase the Creative Journey Pass or switch to the subscription model, we have handy discount codes that can save you a lot of money. So check the description of this video for the codes and make sure you use them at Skylum website at skylum.com. Now we know how to get the tool and it's time to look at where to find it and how to use it. So we are already in Luminar Neo and we are starting in catalog module. As always, if you want to follow me along, make sure that you jump into the description of this video, click on the link there and download the sample files now. Once you're ready, we can continue. Now moving on, let's talk about where to find the tool. So the GenSwap tool, just like the Gen Erase and the Gen Expand in the future will be located in catalog module in the generative tools section of the toolbar on the right side of your screen. You will see we already have the Gen Erase here and now we also have the Gen Swap. So this is where you find it and this is how you access it. Now, first thing, we're gonna select the image with the castle. So again, let's make sure that it's selected and then we're gonna click on the GenSwap button. By doing that, that will open a new window where we're gonna be able to do the swapping or adding of the new elements. So the first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna go to the bottom of our screen and we're gonna go through all the available controllers. Starting from the left, we have a name of the tool and then we have the option to undo and redo any of the steps we're gonna make here in this tool. After that, we have the eye icon and when you click on it, it will give you a little bit more information about the tool. Following into the next section, we have the possibility to look at the before and after and also to zoom in and out on the image. You can do it through this little shortcut here or you can also use the scrolling wheel on your mouse. Moving to the next section, this is where you control your brush. The GenSwap is a very simple tool. What you do, you select the area that you want to swap, then add your text prompt, and then you swap it. So to select the area, you want to be using Brush. Now you have two options here. One is to select, and the other one is to deselect. So it's very simple. By selecting, you basically brush over the image. And if you make a mistake, then you can select the deselect, and then basically brush over the area again. Following the two buttons, we have an option to adjust the size of our brush. And then altogether, we can also click on Reset Selection, which will remove any areas that are selected on the image. So what we're gonna do with this image to demonstrate the tool and the basic use of it, we're gonna basically add a lake to the bottom of the hill. So for this, we need quite big brush. And again, we want to make sure that we are on select. When it comes to selecting the areas you want to replace, you don't want to be exact. In a matter of fact, 
you want to do the opposite. You want to select a little bit of extra so the application has enough data to recognize how to add the element and how to blend it into the rest of the image. So what we're going to do just very quickly, we're going to select the bottom of the image. So let's say somewhere around here. And then once we let go, you will notice that our prompt field will appear. Here we can now click and we can describe exactly what we are looking for. So for us, we're going to just add simple lake with reflection. When it comes to adding your prompt, you want to be as detailed as possible. So for example, we could add lake with green water and reflection. It really depends on what element you're trying to add. But once again, think about it and try to add as many details as you can. Once you're happy with the prompt, then all there is left to be done is to click on swap. Once we do that, you will notice a number of tips appearing on your screen while you're waiting for the new element to be added. Now, this is a good time to talk about how this generative AI gen swap tool work. Well, to put it simply, the tool works by taking the chosen area and sending it into the cloud. There, an AI machine attempts to create the element you requested and blend it seamlessly into the surrounding areas. Once completed, the tool sends the updated image back to the application, replacing the original selected area with the newly created element. Now we are back in the application and when we hover with our mouse outside of the editing panel, we will be able to check the result. Now I like the way it's blended into the image, but I'm not crazy about the color of the water and I think that the reflection isn't great neither. So what we're going to do, we're going to adjust our prompt and we're going to remove the part about the green water. So just like that, we're going to end up with lake with reflection. So now we have our prompt adjusted. So once again, all we need to do is to click on the swap button. Now, one more time, the application will regenerate the new area and bring it back for us to see if we like it more. As you can see, again, we are back in the application. So the workflow is same. We're going to hover over and have a look at the result. Don't forget that you can also check the before and after. And I like this result much more. Now, one more time from here, you can also use the undo and redo. And one more time, you can check the before and after. Once you're happy with the result, you can navigate to the top right corner of your screen and click on Save. Once you do that, the application will return into Catalog module where it will create a new image in the format which will include all the new elements you added. Now, the new image will be saved in a folder called Generative Creation. This folder is shared by GenErase, GenExpand, and also the GenSwap tools. And that's where all these new images will be added. Now from here, you can have a look at the image. And if you want, you can keep it here and continue with the edit by moving it into edit module. Or you can move it into your own folder by simply dragging it and dropping it there. So for us, we're going to return to our gen swap folder and we're going to look at the result one more time. So again, before and after. Since we already here, let's try the tool on one more image. This time we're going to be using the capture of the lady in a black dress. And what we're going to do again, we're going to click on gen swap. And one more simple example, we're going to add a pearl earring into her ear. So again, you know what to do, little bigger brush adjusted with our slider and we're going to gently brush over the ear and a little bit under. Once happy with that, again, back to our prompt toolbar where we're going to simply write white pearl ear ring. With that being done, we now going to click on swap. Once we back in the application, again, hover outside of the toolbar and have a look at the result. And I think it looks very lovely. However, if you like different kind of pearl 
earring, you can again simply click on the swap button without adjusting the prompt. So let's do that. Let's click on swap again. Once we return, again, we can hover outside of the toolbar to see the result. And we can also return to our undo and redo to check the two versions between each other. So I can undo the edit and see if I prefer the smaller pearl or I can redo the edit and see if I prefer the bigger version. In my case, I actually preferred the first version. So I'm gonna undo the step, double check again with my before and after. And I'm quite happy about how it looks. So again, back to the top right corner of the screen where we click on save. Now I already told you once the new image is created, it will be added into the generative creations folder from where we can take the image and again, drag and drop it into our original folder. So now we have the new image here and we would continue with the edit. Now, before we going to continue with the gen swap, Photo editing workflow, I wanted to remind you that this tutorial is powered by our Luminar Neo Photo Manipulation Masterclass. This amazing course is designed to help you to unlock your creativity and boost your photo editing skills in Luminar Neo. With 15 fun and exciting projects and over six hours of high quality videos, you're going to love it. So if you're interested in learning more, head over to our website, cleverphotographer.com. And to get the best possible price, make sure that you follow the link in the description of this video. Now, before we finish, let's talk about how to incorporate GenSwap tool into your photo editing workflow. As the new file or new image will be saved in a TIFF format, you want to make sure that you get the most out of the original file by starting the editing process with the basic adjustments in edit module. For this, you can use develop or develop pro tool, and you can also utilize tools like noiseless AI and super sharp AI. After you satisfied with the initial adjustments, move the image back to the catalog module and then into gen swap tool. Here, you can start adding new elements, just like on this example right here, where we're going to change the color of the jumper. But you don't have to stop here. You can continue. And on this example, what we're going to do, we're going to change the background into an old London street covered in snow. Again, once we're happy, what we're going to do, click on save and bring the image back into the catalog module. From here, the third step is really simple. We're going to take the image back into the edit module where we're going to continue with the editing process using other available Luminar Neo tools. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cloudphotographer.com slash luminargift. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment, and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors, and I can't wait to see you in the next video.